Welcome back everyone, I'm Zell, and today we're looking at the Tuya Knives Argon. So you know guys, Argon is an inert gas. It's And it's also one of the, well, what you'd call trace gases in the air. But it's one of the major ones. It's probably the most major of the trace gases from what I can read. And most importantly, it's a noble gas. And that's what we have here. We have a noble effort by two knives that comes out to an absolutely beautiful knife with only one major issue that I can come across. Okay, two. I'll try to keep it to two. So let's get a look at what you get. Well, first, we have a 3D machined handle and uh, we got a nice gold pivot collar there and all of the goodness now once again like they did on the bruiser this is not softened a bunch i like that it's not a negative for me but you need to be aware so if you look down through there those edges they're not sharp by any means but they're not softened a whole bunch to give it this cuddly soft in the hand feel We've got a nice backspacer, nice titanium backspacer. Got uh, a lanyard hole with a little bit of flare. Pocket clip that has a very similar pattern around the outside of it. And uh, we also have a free spinning pivot that's very similar to what Best Tech uses. In fact, it could be the same pivot that Best Tech is using. I have asked and uh, not gotten a definitive answer, but uh, the the wiggle around answer that I got on some of this stuff that you guys have been bringing up between to you and Best Tech is pretty simple. Whenever you're in China, just like being here in the United States, and you need a specific part, there's a limited number of suppliers that have large volumes of that particular part available. And you make your deal with whoever you make your deal with. And usually it's the guy that can meet your specifications at the best price. And that's what I'm assuming happened here. And what I'm assuming happened down the road at Best Tech. Because that's another thing that uh, just like in a few areas around the states. It's like a knife mecca. Y you've got several different companies in one area and you know you have vendors running up down the streets trying to sell you everything because that's just how they are but uh that from what i understand is why some of these two you knives ended up with same or similar pivots to what best tech's using good enough answer i'll agree with that i've been through that and uh from what i understand talking to the to you service rep here in the states that is a thing that's going to go away that they are looking at their own pivots and uh, looking at vendors and looking at possibly making their own to get away from you know looking like other brands coming from the same area sounds like a good plan to me anyhow getting another close look at that knife look at that piece s 35e and it's just laying right down the center just like it's supposed to got bearings down in there and wow i like what they've done with the design here i like it a lot it's different without being gaudy or freaky or any of those things uh, i've even heard complaints about the way they did the anodizing i actually kind of like the anodizing you guys can call it what you want but uh call me weird because well i probably am but i like what they did here uh, I actually like the coloration, like it a lot. So, let's get some size comparison out of the way. There is our two knives, Argon. We're just going to call it Noble. What do you think? The Noble knife? All right, all right, it's an Argon. There's our Buck 110 and our Rat Model 2. Rat Model 1, excuse me. I'm trying to shrink that big old rat. And it's a knife in similar class with these. Uh, and the knife weighs 4.66 ounces. And we'll go through all the measurements here in just a moment. There's our 
Spyderco. And the Spyderco, of course, is smaller. Definitely, uh, you know, if you put this in with other titanium knives, you know, it's right in there with them. There's a slipstream from Wii. I mean, they're all 3.5 to 3.8, around half an inch thick, with uh, generally they have 0.156 blade stock. This one happens to have 0.15 blade stock, so it's thinned up a little bit. And let's see here. Our measurements, we're at 4.9 inches closed, 0.55 thick, closed height of 1.21 because that blade hides down in there really slick. I like that. An open overall length of 8.4 and a blade length of 3.5. I actually measured 3.52 and a weight of 4.66 ounces and a grip length of 3.62. Now, let's get a look at that blade if I can get it back out there instead of playing with it. And once again, Tuya has come with that really, really nice polished belt grind. Love it. They've done the same thing up there on that swedge. If I can get some light on that, there we go. Just super nice. Got a drop point style, 0 0.150 thick. And we've got a pretty, really even grind. Got a nice, really nice edge termination. Look at that. Uh, Tuya Knives, 1702, first production, blah, 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 on this side. And on this side, just the Tuya Knives emblem. Uh, if I could give Tuya Knives some advice, since they're a young company, uh, take this off the knife. Just... Just erase it, and for your if you want to do a numbered thing, go back here somewhere or on the spine of the blade. Uh, do it somewhere else. Leave S35VN in there like uh, you're doing like we does, nice and small and out of the way. If you want to leave your two your knife triangle thing there, cool. That's a neat emblem, and it's not obtrusive and doesn't look weird, and you're not making it really big. But, uh, yeah, all the writing... Put it somewhere else and just get rid of the TU Knives T1702 thing. Doesn't need to be on there. Uh, otherwise, and even with that, the blade looks really good. We've got a stonewash flat, that uh, belt finish with the near mirror polish. My God, man, that is... Oh, it's a beautiful thing. That's what that is. Oh, very nice, and S35VN, if I didn't mention it, I probably did, but I did again. And from here, guys, we're going to go to our pause and read card, and I'll be right back with you. All right, mechanically, uh, have you guys seen a titanium frame lock flipper in the past uh, video on one in the past several weeks? Oh, I, yeah, I thought you had. Well, it's all the same stuff. And that's a good thing. A very good thing. We have a lock bar insert with over-travel stop. We got ceramic bearings with ceramic detent. We've got hardened steel backing washers. And there you go. Titanium handles. That's 6AL4V, just like everybody else. And we will check the screws because... I do think there's one thing we're going to have to talk about there. Let's get the screwdriver in there. And there's our Weehaw. And they're not bad. I have spoken to the two-year rep about this stuff, though. And he tells me that even though these screws are pretty darn good, that they're going to bump up their screw quality. You know I love hearing that. God, you guys know I love hearing that. So the screw quality, even though it's pretty good now, should be going up. And that is always a beautiful thing. Now, action. Uh, you know, Staza 23 had exactly this same knife. He said it had a super snappy action at a very reasonable price. And he's right. The price on the street is $154 for S35VN, titanium, blah, 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 all the good stuff. And look at that. You know, I looked at the bruiser, and it is like this as well. If I break that detent, it's going to open. It's just all there is to it. Now see how it closes. It's not exactly a guillotine close, but it's pretty close. A little more use on it. And it's better than what Staza had in his video. So a little more use 
and this guy is going to be a guillotine closer. So they know how to do it. And speaking of that bruiser, right here it is. And the bruiser, I want to show you one thing, and this is a design element that I hope Tuya does keep on many of their own designs. This is getting into ergonomics, guys. We'll get it in the pocket here in just a minute. This shape right here, the uh, forward finger choil slash sharpening choil. I really, really love it on this bruiser. That is an outstanding way to do that into your knife. It carries over to the argon. Oh, it, uh, 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 yeah. On the argon, they just did it even better with a perfect edge termination. And they still left it. See? Get a look at that. See how I've still got some room in that forward finger choil? Again, the jimping's a little far back. I'd like to have seen it a little further forward. But, you know, I've got medium-large hands, so maybe I'm just being grumpy. Uh, no, no, it's a gripe. I guess that makes me grumpy, doesn't it? Oh, well. But uh, that would be my only major gripe, is that this could move forward a little bit. It's great right here, but most of the time in daily use, I'm going to pick the knife up and I'm going to grab it here, and I want a little more of this jimping, really nice jimping, but it moved, you know, a half inch or so forward on the knife. And that's going to be my big complaint. Now let's really talk about the ergonomics. You guys know I love this. Uh, I just talked about it. I talked about it with the bruiser. In your standard grip, this thing, uh, it just works. You know, it's that simple handle design. Don't mess with it, stupid type of stuff. And to you didn't. Very simple handle design. Fills a hand pretty good. And nothing sharp, nothing pointy, nothing to get in my way, nothing to cause me to not be able to hold on to the knife the way I want to. I can get it however I want, and the knife accommodates me. And that, my friends, is a beautiful thing. So let's get this thing stuck in the pocket and see how that works out. All right, you see how slick it went in that pair of Levi's? If you are wearing Levi's with this knife, you are golden. However, this little ramp here is not tall enough. The clip works fine in, uh, oh, your Dickies and your 511s and so on and such forth, your Carhartts, all that kind of stuff. But there's not enough ramp on the end of that clip. And, well, let's look here first. I left your lanyard hole out, <clears throat> and the knife fits. I like it. It fits good, but it's really hard to, well, maybe you guys, maybe it isn't that hard to see. The way this knife raises up makes that pocket clip get thinner and thinner, and they pur purposely and did the right thing and adjusted the pocket clip ramp to fit the change in height from here to here on the scale of the knife. And what that does is make this really hard to get in some thicker pants. As you saw in Levi's, no problem. But just like any other young knife company, uh, they get a pair of American Levi's or, you know, whatever, Wranglers, doesn't matter. And they think, fits in, we're good. Well, then they send these things over here. And uh, even our own designers have done this. Uh, here's looking at you, Mr. Browse. And then they realize a month or a year or whatever later that many of us Americans aren't wearing Levi's anymore. Many of us are wearing uh, different brands that have thicker materials, thicker pockets, reinforced pockets. And these are the people buying their knives and they're upset because the pocket clip doesn't fit right. Well, like I said, don't blame to you. They'll learn. They will figure it out with no problem. And uh, this is very springy, so you can lift it up and stick it down in your pocket. No problem. Works really good. And now, guys, my first looks at Tuya knives. I have looked at one of their G10 models, and I've looked at one of their uh, titanium models. And I really, really like what I'm seeing. These guys have got some design chops. These guys have got some machine, machining chops. Uh, what we need to see are 
the promises that they made about, or that they didn't make promises, what they talked about with better screws, uh, pivots that don't f spin freely, and pivots that are their own instead of uh, off-the-shelf stuff. And I assume we're going to see it. I am going to tell you one thing, though, right now. This knife is $154. I will leave you the link to the website uh, where their U.S. distributor and sales are. If you are at all interested in the Argon or the Bruiser, get over there, decide what color you want, and get it bought. Because I cannot, knowing the economics behind the knife scenes, I cannot imagine that either one of these knives will be selling for either $44 or $154 in the next six months. They've got to be getting their knives onto Blade HQ and Knife Center and GP Knives and all that. And what at the prices they're selling them now, there's not enough profit in there. So I would guess that whenever they get the screw, the fastener situation straightened out, uh, that the prices are going to go up. Now, are they going to go up drastically? No, but you're probably looking at 10 bucks or so on the D2 models, and you're probably looking at $30, $40 on the titanium models. And, uh, guys, it's, it's just feeding your family whenever it comes to that. They have a U.S. rep who is a uh, full-time rep for them, full-time uh, distributor, so it's it's not like some of the other companies that use Blue Ridge knives as their distributor and they have a customer service guy or they have a marketing guy here in the States that's doing marketing for them along with a whole bunch of other stuff or doing service for them along with a whole bunch of other stuff. So they've got a... They're, it's just an economic necessity for them to get their knives sold on the bigger websites to sell more volume, that the prices are going to have to come up. And they're doing it right. They're starting and they're putting out what they like and they're listening to the feedback. They're going to make the adjustments. And once the adjustments are made, from what I understand, then the prices will rise a little bit and we'll start seeing them at the customary places uh, where you normally buy knives. And that's a beautiful way to do it. I'm just telling you, if you want one of them, get over to the website link below and do a little shopping and see if there's something you want there. Anyhow, guys, I really appreciate you stopping by and hanging out with me talking about these two you knives. They have been really interesting to get to talk to some of those folks and uh, find out what they're up to. And it's just, uh, you know, it's a family-run business over in China. It's a family-run business here in the States. And they are working hard to bring good knives to you and you know i wish them all luck in the world i can tell you right now i like where they're going and if they continue down this road we're going to get some superb knives out of them you guys have a wonderful day don't forget to like share and subscribe and i will see you next time